Today I'm going to show you the program Python Currency Anywhere. For showing you the program, I will be using codeanywhere.com. It's a very nice platform to set up containers in a few clicks. Let me show you how. Now that I'm already logged in on codeanywhere.com, I just go to File, New Connection, Container. Our program is written with Python 3. Let's call our container Sylvester. To find a container that contains Python 3, we try to search for Python 3. Ah, my favorite environment, Ubuntu. I'm going to pick that. I click Create. We wait a few minutes until it is created. One amazing thing with CodeAnywhere.com is you can have multiple tabs in the platform. That's very convenient if you want to have multiple screens to switch back and forth. The text editor that is provider is very user friendly and I really like using it. And it has very nice colors to contrast the code that you contain in your text so it's more visible to you. It seems that it's already set up for us. So now we just go and right click Sylvester and click SSH terminal. Okay, so now we are going to download our program from GitHub. Now, what we want to do is very simple keywords. It's git clone https github.com, my username, and then it's Python currency anywhere. It already got it. Let's go to the folder and check it out. Yes, I can access the folder. Yes, I can see my files. Okay, now I want to show you something right here. You see, when I click the container by right clicking it and then select refresh, my files are already also updated here. And I can see all of them right here. For I think it's more convenient for me to use the, the, the directory here and edit them through a text editor. So let's go with that. Now let's click the readme. Now this is on Markdown, but we can still read it as it is on the text editor. Um, there is a lot of stuff to read, but don't get too bogged down by it right now. We will go to one to one. Let's go with the installation steps. First, we had to um, we had to clone our program. We also accessed our folder, and now we also need to install some more packages. Mm -hmm. The packages that we install here are very simple. We need the simple JSON because the, the, the services that we retrieve, uh, the currency is in JSON format. And then uh, the, set, the, the settings that we uh, have to configure for each service provider are saved on a file called settings.ini. That settings.ini in order to parse it, we use the module config parser. Okay, so you can see we have three service provider on the settings file. Fixer, currency layer, and open exchange rates. We can even add more. But most of them have similar features that they provide and in similar format. And I think there are many more others 
that like to standardize the currencies like other service providers. So here are just three to name a few. Now, uh, now that I, I, I've gone through you through this, um, let's go back to our terminal. Now, what I want you to do here is to get a grasp of what Python Currency Anywhere is. What Python Currency Anywhere is, is you remember those three settings that we saw earlier? Those are currency service providers through the, through the API that they provide you. You can access currency in any format that you want. A lot of the currencies that they provide, uh, the basic features, like the, they usually provide one base currency for free to get any currency from any day, but with a limit cap of 1,000 requests per month. If you want to have more features in more uh, more complicated formats, like if you want to convert the currency or you want to get the time series or uh, and, and so on and so on, that we will go on and show you in here, you have to pay a subscription plan. And in my opinion, you can do the same stuff with your own processor by using my program. It's the difference between buying takeaway food or cooking it yourself. And also, you can you can uh, bypass the limit of the one thousand uh, by by storing the data that you already retrieved for that day by storing it in a MySQL database. So next time. You don't need to fetch it if you already fetched it. Fetched it. It's, in other words, it's cassette. And that's the amazing thing of this program. We also have, it, and it's not only limited to one service provider, but to multiple ones. So now that you know what we are, uh, uh, what we're going to explore in this program, let's go through it. I hope the introduction was more enough to uh, get you started. Okay. One of the things that I want to tell to you is the the currency that we use right here is on configuration. The, 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 the currencies that we store here on uh, currency configurations, you can see we have a lot of different currencies here. They are not from any currency service provider because based on their terms of service, you cannot uh, use their data as a way to share it publicly for others. This, and right here, we don't share you any of the data that you would have been able to access through the API in our program. We have to register an API key on those three service providers. Let me give you the links. On the readme, it will have the links. Here is one fixer. The other one is open exchange rates org sign up and the other one is um, if I if I scroll more to the right it's currency layer .com product now if you have more um, uh, if you really want to help and give me a hand you can add more currencies here on the settings they should but it may not be straightforward but if you really know we, we can add uh, another uh, uh, currency service provider that follows a similar format like that, and you just create a pull request, and I can test it out, and we can have more currencies. Uh, some that uh, I I found and they are not added yet is um, right here on contribution. Uh, European European Central Bank fit. Uh, the other one would be cryptocurrency API services like like coin api or crypto compare just those to name a few we also want people to find any bugs or fix them or refactor our code or do some unit testing if you really like you just go to our program that's stored on github it's github.com slash a s o k r a t i s my username then uh, slash Python hyphen currency hyphen anywhere. Okay, 
So now that we are here, let's go back to the topic. These currencies, they are not from the currency service provider. Instead, I picked them from Wikipedia. I created a program of scraping the data from Wikipedia to show you where I got them. So in case it, get, if it gets broken, we only have to fix that program. So far, it still works after half a year. And this is the, the, the file that it, it runs through. So basically, it goes to the wiki page, list of circulating currencies. And it has a lot of currencies. Sometimes they get updated from time to time, but not so often. Like sometimes they can remove a currency or something. Sometimes they have like multiple type of currencies. But the point is that's like more like a dummy file and that you have to replace it. So let's, uh, let's try to replace it. Now, if you really want to rank, if you really want to run the Wikipedia currency configuration, then all you have to install is additional modules called Beautiful Soup 4 and Drag X on your Python 3 environment. Let me just show it, show you how, how that works. I'm going to install those two, but we also need to install the basic stuff. The basic stuff is config parser and the JSON. But let's install that later because we don't need them right now. We only need them when we when we run the main program. So let's do that. Beautiful soup four and regex. Okay. So to Oh, no, not sudo apt get pip3, sudo pip3 install. Interesting enough, you can also use it on me. So sudo pip3 install beautiful shoot. Uh, did I write it correctly? Beautiful soup form. Okay, interesting enough. And then regex. This takes a little bit of while, a little bit of, uh, oh yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna run. So, so it updated the currency configurations. This is how I do it. And then I just upload it on GitHub. So if you, um, for instance, um, create a pull request and you manipulated the currency configurations uh, to one of the currency service provider, do not push that into our GitHub. Instead, run Python 3 Wikipedia currency configurations that py instead. Now, uh, or otherwise, you can just uh, overwrite to the old file that is already uh, that already exists on GitHub. So uh, probably you won't see much changes. I think only one currency gets removed and stuff. Um, regardless. Um, now, no, um, um, I can just remove it so I can show you that it really actually works. Uh, so we remove that one right. This again. Yep. Okay. You don't really need to delete the file, it will actually overwrite it itself. Hmm. Okay, let's continue. I hope that five minute think that we went off topic did not disturb you, but I'm trying to give you the full comprehensive uh, view of the program Python currency anywhere. Now, um,
Now, now what we're going to do right now is finish the installation. Sorry that we went off track so much again. So we go back to readme and go to the installation. We install those packages we mentioned before, which is the simple JSON and config parser from the requirements. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Mm. And then we update now the currency configurations. Now, if you are in this step, you must already have registered um, fixture, open exchange rate, and currency layer, one of those. Then once you register, you log in, and you go to the dashboard, and it has an API key. You put that in the settings. So if you registered at, at fixture, you just put it here. If you registered at currency layer, you, just, you could paste it here, or if you registered at open exchange rate, you put it right here. The rest of the variables that you see here is, it just, we, we, we do two things in our program. One is to get the currency list. The other one is to get um, a currency, uh, the currency values based on the base currency at a specific date. That is all. Only those two uh, URLs we create so we can keep it simple and you can add more sources. The other thing is maybe on those domain is to also figure out how does the JSON output an error. Now that's more like a work in progress thing because if they are they're all working they're a little bit different and yeah. So all you have to do is just paste the API key here and you don't put any code. You see like this one? It's not without quotes. So you just paste it there and it should work out. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna, I, I have registered all three accounts and, and, I have, and I will just paste the API keys here. And then when I want to call that, I will just call it by the service name provider. If I want to call this one, I will call this fixer. Then I will call it currency later if I want to call this and so on and so on. So, let's do that. Now I'm just gonna upload it here. Uh, it's on configurations, right? Okay. So right here, I'm just gonna upload. Um, um, So I, I, I'm currently uploading my, my, my settings. So it's already uploaded. So what I will do is I will go to the, the root of my file. And then I will just move this file. Maybe you can go to, you can just remove that file first. On configurations, mm, no, it's on okay, right here. It's, it's, it's on the root of the folder. Let me just move that. Okay. Now, if I go there, it will be there, and we are great in a great position. Now we have all the three. Uh, Uh, refresh. Now we have all the three uh, service providers registered and embedded into our settings, so we can use all three of them if we wish to, and we are going to plan to do that. Now, well, yeah, so here we have of the current service providers, two of them use US, two of them use, I don't know, some of them use the, use the dollar, the US dollar based currency, others use the European, uh, the, the European base currency. Um, so there are like some small differences, but that doesn't matter at all. It will still work fine. Okay. 
Okay, let's continue. The last step is to update the, the currency of the service provider that we want to use. Most of them use a very similar, so one of them will, will do the trick. So right here we say update currency configuration. Let's go with I like open exchange rates because um we don't charge you API. I don't think they charge you an API call. Well the other ones it charge you an API call for getting the, the currency symbols. I'm I'm not sure why. So yeah, open exchange rates, updated currency configurations. So yeah, if I go right here, it should be already up. Um, does it have Bitcoin? I'm not sure. Like what, what? I don't even want to use this. It's interesting. Let me try. Um, again. I know Fixer has Bitcoin. I'm not sure if this one has Bitcoin. It has. So now it's updated and test Bitcoin. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I can see 172. I mean, is there any difference? Let me try to run the other ones as well. This fixer. Just see how many lines it has. Okay. Um, 171, okay, um, this one, this one. Currency layer, 171, okay, and open exchange rate. You see, I can get the currency service uh, from the any currency service provider. I can get the currency list. It doesn't matter which. And it seems that um, open exchange rates gives me one extra. Most of them have, you know, they just follow the same standards. Okay. And then we just run a, a simple test run of the currency service provider just so it works we just you know just this is the thing that you will be using very often and what this really does is um i think i have a definition here but it basically it just gets the currency for today's date for one unit in euro uh, base currency uh, in comparison with all the other currencies that are stored in the currency configuration file we saw earlier, which means translates to around 170 currencies. So yeah. Let's run that. Okay. Now this one will be if I run it like that, this will be in CSV format, so it would be very ugly, but that's fine. Um, well, the thing I also want to show you is the debug, so you can see what is going behind the, the wheels. Let me just put something like debug on this specific flag parameter. The, the service provider name is fixture, so we just run this. And, oh, an error showed up. Okay, this error happens because uh, some um, uh, currency service providers do not uh, cannot recognize some characters. I mean, I mean, some platforms like this one, this Linux platform, does not recognize uh, some special characters. Uh, so for those cases, um, it's good to mention that you will need to um, run this one export Python I encoding UTF-8. Hmm. And then it should work fine. But you can ignore that error in the middle. Uh, what we want to see is what's happening uh, on behind the wheels. Okay. So if you can see right here, we 
it, it, it runs the API call to get to get some currency for that date. You see, 2018 uh, August 10. We uh, we yeah we um, we uh, reduct the API key because that's case sensitive. So we just remove that. But if you run this URL and you replace your API key with your API key, it should show the results. Once we get the results, once we get the results, we put them inside our MySQL database. Let me show you. We go to folder data, and for each uh, service provider name, it has its own name. You see right here we have the name Fixer. Also, the base currency that you are using, in this case, is Euro. And from there, it has all the currencies that we have. Uh, fetched so far. This is the smart way of you know not bypassing the 1000 limit. As in, if you run this a thousand times for the same date, you will not get charged any API anymore. As you can see, in order to get these results, it does not retrieve them from the, uh, the JSON but from my SQL file. Um, the query is exactly the same, no matter the service provider name. Just the MySQL file would be have a different name, so the, the file name that it returns would just be different. And that's just about it. Uh, right here, you can see it picks all the currencies for that date. Um, basically, that is something that we do know no matter what, uh, if we change the currency configurations, we don't change this, it's always the same. And we do all the manipulation in our Python script by, yeah, as you will see soon. Uh, we do some changes if we pick like less coins. I will show you that later. But you shouldn't worry about that. There is a lot of things that it goes under the hood, and I'm going to try to explain with you, so be patient with it. So the first time it runs, it gives me the results. Now, the second time I run this thing exactly, you will see on the debug that it's not calling the API anymore because it tries to recognize. Is it already stored in the database for that date? If it is, I don't call the API call. So let's call that again. Now let's go back to the root of the folder and call it again. Okay. So now there's no more an error because we export that uh, UTF-8 on our Linux platform. So as you can see right here, um, uh, right here you can see it doesn't call anymore the API. It can recognize that it's already stored in the, My the MySQL server and it just gets the data straight from the database without needing to go to access to, to the internet. Now this one is a little bit um, not very clear to read. So let's make it visually appealing. We have a flag called visual. And now it's like, oh, now, now I can read this. It's so much easier to read. Is that right? Yep, it is. Now the, the, the ugly one, you know, that, you know it, it's all uh, uh, cramped together with a delimiter in between. Right here we just use the comma. It's very useful if you want to import that file as a CSV. So and so you just we can just append it. Okay. So let me go back because I can find that very useful for database uh, operations. As you can see here I'm gonna remove the debug temporarily. Right here you see the file it includes also the header. Sometimes we don't want to have the header, so we can also remove the header. I think there's a flag called no header. So I think we have here on the documentation, you can see the output of the columns we have. And you also see here all the parameters we have. So basically we'll just uh, be spending most of the time on, on this area. So as you can see, the flag parameter no header exists. and that's uh, the thing that we will be using. Now, maybe I don't want all the currencies here because there are too much. So I can filter the currencies that I only want. So the way I can do it is two ways. 
One of it is by using the parameter uh, currency name list, and the other one I think it is the symbol list. Symbol list is the three key abbreviation. You have to be very uh, precise, but it's case insensitive. But the currency name list it's wild card, so you can pick any currencies based on that wild card that you input as a text. Okay. Let's use um, let's use the base currency then. Base currency is one of the optional parameters, and we're gonna use uh, USD, uh, Japanese, and maybe Bitcoin for today's date. Uh, let me put Singapore as well. So there was an error. Um, uh, I think uh, here we can see all the parameters, and basically. I think uh, you have to put them in quotes if you have like more than one um, because it doesn't accept spaces. Uh, okay, so we get an error again here. Um, did I type it correctly? Oh, no, sorry. Base currency, you can only input one. <laughs> And that's if you want to change the currency that you want to convert it, we can go later. Uh, what we were talking about is oh, my head is like mm, got lost for a while. Symbol list, that's what we were talking about. I still think it will not work if you don't put coach in between, but it does work. Okay, so I take my words back. It's just I'm not. I don't remember exactly. So yeah, we have Bitcoin, Singapore, and United States dollars. I think it's yen. And it's also case insensitive just to show you how it works. Um, so another way, like, I don't remember the currency, but it has the word Japan in it, right? So I can just say um, uh, I, I can I, I can for instance uh, from the readme here I, I can use the currency name list as a parameter instead. Now you may think that this is like too um, too uh, much work to just get some results, but a lot of API services are like that. They have a lot of Options in the parameters like uh, the Google services, uh, Google Cloud services, they provide a lot of options to do something with, with the program, whether that's uh, BigQuery or MySQL or, or whatever else it is. But they also have like some nice more wrappers around it. So you can, you can, you can focus more on doing your job. Uh, or you can have like some nice user interfaces. Google BigQuery just updated their user interface and it's very, very cool. So you can think about the idea, but all of them, all of them under the hood, they, they have something like this that runs and, and, and just have a nice user experience design and stuff. Okay, so we put Japan and it found it in Japanese and it's JP, J, JPY. You see, so this is a wild card. You can find all the currencies on the currency configurations you have and just uh, blurge it out for you. So now we can just fix what we were doing just now. And we just put JPY. Now we have all the four currencies here. Um, and we know every time we do right now this thing, we don't get charged, uh, no API calls at all because it, as we saw in the debug, it just picks it from the database, which is cool. Otherwise, if it didn't, every time we will do it, will go like we did five API calls, 10 API calls, and one, at some point we will have reached to the 1000 API call limit. Now, now we have a very small list. Okay. So what do you want to do? Okay, let's make a folder and say, uh, my, uh, this is like, um, I'm going to create an um, output file. And output, yeah. 
and then I just want to create a file with that output with the results I have here. So I'm just gonna say uh, on the output file. Open. So here and uh, this uh, you know put uh, this one is very simple on Bash Linux. It's just a, a, a quotation mark, uh, and it means I'm creating a file. So now I'm creating a file, and I'm gonna create it inside the output folder and I'm gonna save my results. That's it. Is yeah. And now if I go to check my results, right? It has all the points. But I already put the header once. I don't want to put it twice. So let's say now we're gonna get. You know, so far we only get points for today's date. What if I want to get the currency for a year for, 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 for a year ago? So in order to do that, you have to add use another optional parameter called date list. And then on a date list you put like 2017 August 10th. And we just instead of creating a file or writing it, we append it. And to append you just put those two uh, to create a simple signs to the file that you want to append. Okay, so what we will please do is, well, we won't want the header, right? So we put a flag parameter, no header in it. Now we have for the last year as well. So let's try and run that. This will of course charge you one API call because we never retrieved that date before. Okay, so now I go to my results. And you can see that uh, both are already um, retrieved here. Uh, you can see here's the 2017 and here's the 2018. It just appends them, the, the existing records, the ones before it. Now, this may be too cumbersome, right? Yeah, like doing it once every time. But, you know, uh, what if I want uh, to append more dates at once or you know just want to show dates at once, more dates at once so what you can do is i can just put 2017 october 8 2017 october. that's not october that's august okay a8 okay so we have three more dates and we can append them all at once by just putting some yeah. so let's do that and so this will do add three dates for those three currencies. And then if I look at it, I can see that it appended for the 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 the, the six. Uh, hmm, we did six. Okay, six, eight, and nine. Six, then eight, and nine. Now, this is like okay. Um, I, if I want input like 10, it's like oh, I have to input it 10 times the data, and they are consecutive. Can I do it in another way? Yeah, you can do that. So uh, that, uh, but you can only put uh, one. You have to put only one parameter on the date list, and that is um, the days interval. So let's say I have, um, and that can be positive or negative, right? So now, right now we have um, six, right? Okay. So maybe I want to get, I want to get from from August one to August five. So I just put it in interval of four. So I think this day and four more days. So so it will be this one will be from August one to August five. So then we put another parameter here, this interval, and I put four. And if I go and see the results, I can see that it did until five. So you see five, four, three, and then we have two here, and then we have one. So it did the job for me. Now um, you can also go backwards. So let's say I want to get July 31 and 30, 29, and 28. So I just run it like that with minus three. And then if I look at it, it just got 31, 30, 29, and 28. So everything, yeah.
you can like get currencies more easy if you know that the, the dates are consecutive that you want to get you can just use the the parameter um the the um uh, what's that name the uh, the days interval okay so then you have like a lot of um, output columns right so i have like one of those questions that uh can pop out or something like that and one of the questions can be like um like what if i don't want all the columns in my output section it's such a big file i don't think it will but if that's your case we have, now we have a, a file um you can see that we have those eight columns um those other seven and eight be swap only if you use the output fluctuation parameter enabled, which we will see soon. So if you have like um, those uh, six columns that you want, let's say you only want the rate, the date, and the symbol. So two, four, no, two, two, five, two, two, three, and five. Okay, we want two, three, and five. So what you can do is after you save the file, you can um, run an additional script. So I think uh, this is the question. Do you have the option for getting only the columns I need? No, but you can with Linux. So what you will do is you run the cut the and create another you will create another flat file and you will be all set up for it hmm, right here so what it does is it just use uh, it's use the delimiter comma and remember what columns we said we want it's not two five of course it's um two three and five right yeah two three five. let me see okay uh, so this is the derived flat file um, that's going to be on my output and my results is output for 2, 3, and 5. My results and then that did the derived file. Okay, so now if I go and check my derived that file, now it has only the stuff that I really need, which is the symbol, the date, and the rate. So that's how you can do it. Uh, just follow the, the QA and you can just look at the list of the outputs, which ones you want, the numbers, just plug them in and you got what you really needed. Okay. So I think we went uh, very, very thoroughly on if you don't want to use the visual and you want to save it in a CSV file, this is like the different stuff that you can do and play around. Uh, but I mean, for if, if, if you like to see the currencies on your terminal, you can as well too, okay? Now, uh, in order to get the, 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 the currencies that you want to see on the terminal. You do it in the same way as you, we did before. So right here, um, we're gonna see, I'm going to show you that all these uh, things we have, we just run them the same exactly as we did before. Like the last thing we did in the operation for uh, saving the currencies for the last uh, uh, days and before, three days and before on July 31. Just plug visual and you get the visual format of it. Uh, but um, now I'm just messing up the my results because now I added the visual. You should never do that. Look, look how it will look like if I if, if, yeah, if. so. Don't do that. Don't append files um, that have visual because it will look like this. Uh, this is not 
what you want. But if you really, but sometimes it can be. I'm, 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 I'm not the one who's going to judge. Maybe you don't want to use this CSV format, but something that's readable. Okay, up to you. Uh, you another thing that I want to mention is we don't enclose in quotes the file, the, 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 the CSV file because I don't see there should be any 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 abnormal characters. But um, if it is, we can add it on the next future. If there is somebody who puts it on a pack or something about it, but because I'm not really using it to this in production that much in my in my projects and stuff, uh, I cannot know. So please test it and tell us if you find something that doesn't work. So um, let's run this again without appending any files. Let's also run the path to show you that these prompts are not using any API calls anymore because they are already stored in our MySQL database. As you can see, it runs the query right here. You see, right here. Okay. So, so right here, if you, if you see right here, down here, yeah. Um, what's this here? So, if you see right here, um, um, it runs all these um, queries again and again, and from July 28 to July 31, to only the currency symbols that we want. It's it, it uses this. Maybe you want to check something else. Maybe you want to see that. Okay, what does it do? Um, it, 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 it stores all the currencies, but you cannot. So you don't need to. If you get like your currencies that you never tried before, you will still have stored them already there. Is that crazy? Okay, let's say we get a dollar. That's like, yeah. So there's a lot of dollars here, and as you can see, it does not need to call the, the, the API call again. As you remember, we only got like only what, three to four currencies before? We only needed four currencies before between those states. When we call the API call, we don't only download the four currencies, but we download all the currencies between those states. So next time it calls, it will have all the currencies available. What we expect is, is that um, there will not be any new currencies added later on for those existing dates before, and the data for those uh, the data for the currency uh, for those dates and before will be more or less. Um, uh, Static, they won't change anymore. They are more like activity data. So once that date passes, the data will remain the same. You run this three months for the same date, it will print still the same results. So uh, in those cases, you don't have to worry too much about it to read, uh, to to say did the data fluctuate for that date? Uh, most likely not. But if it really does, then maybe you then, then maybe uh, in order for it to work properly, you have to delete the file on the database. But I'm pretty sure that 99% chances is that we won't ever have to do that. So here we have um, the file, uh, and right here it uses like 74 kilobytes. You can see that this one gets populated more and more if we fill up more calls. So now let's say, let's go a little bit more heavy on this. Um, let's go and say, okay, I want June 31, June 20 to June 31 dates. Yeah. Now do 10, 11 API calls. Then you will see the URLs popping up. Remember how many files we have here? Um, 74 kilobytes. Okay. Uh, so something uh, errored out here, and uh, most likely there is no June 31. So we have a very good validation program that checks whether that date exists or not. Um, so. And then it just output those dates. So
So if you, so you see it's days out of range for month, yeah. During the hundred okay. Yeah, so hmm. I'm not sure about that. But then then again it's fine. Never mind. I'll show you about valid dates later. So right here we have the dates interval here, and you see it calls it ten times, and then it runs it, then runs again, again, and then gets the results, and then after it gets all the results, it just outputs on the final format. So you can see it calls it ten times. But if I if I run it again, it won't call it ten times anymore. Same thing. So as you can see, it does not it does not you don't see the URL anymore. Um, now let's go and check. Um, uh, it was like seventy four kilobytes. Now it's like hundred thirty two kilobytes. So the more you add, the more bigger it becomes. So that's something that you should also take into consideration. You only need to store one base currency here. Okay. Um, um, now, uh, uh, the other thing that I want to talk about is is we we have like a lot of other stuff that we want to talk about and. Let's put the header back. Removing no header because it's, for visual purposes it doesn't make sense to remove the header, but that's up to you. You save the visuals in the platform. Um, let's just get, for instance, only today's date, June 30. Now, um, now what I want to show you right here is let's pay more attention to the visualization data and stuff. So that's why I make my screen a little bit smaller. Now, if you really pay attention right here, because we, didn't, we never paid attention to visualize data, is um, uh, if you see right here, we have all here the currencies, right? One of the things that I really wanted to talk about is we run this script. And let me, let me gather my thoughts, what I was trying to talk about. Invalid dates, right? So we have something like 2019. It, it would say, you know, date of that is out of bounds. It must be between those dates. So we are able to validate dates if it's between those date ranges. But if I write something abnormal right here, 1031, it will just give me an exception error. Uh, I think. Um, I, I can see that it, you know, it tries to convert the date, and when it tries to convert it, the errors out. So it's based on the, you know, let me just check here. I'm 44. Yeah, so it returns an exception for me. So yeah, it has this thing, it says incorrect data from one should be YYMNDD. 
So we do output an error in it. We have an exception, but it's not like very user friendly. But like the one that says, you know, it's not like so nice as in um, as the one what we have here and says, you know, it's out of bounds. But yeah, it's fine. But mix, yeah, but the, the, it won't it won't mess up. I think if we put a, a date that it does not really exist, like especially the February ones, we say thirty or something. So I think it's very smart as in it uses the, I think it uses the date of Python. So if you put something like February twenty eighth and then you want the two days after it, it will know how to do that. It's, yeah. yeah, so it picked all of them February 28th, then it jumps to March 1, and it does it. Yeah, so I just want to tell you that the dates are kind of smart, so you don't have to worry too much about it. We're like, oh, we saw an exception. Not a big deal. So now that we have that, uh, I wanted to tell you, talk to you about the advanced features of Fixer, and then uh, how we use the other currency service providers, right? No, I, I, those features that I'm talking about that Fixer has is also provided by the other currency service providers. They're all the same. So I'm just going to say the, the, the advanced features of any currency service provider that we provide to you. So I'm going to go to the documentation because it's it's very nice and stuff. Uh, we can see here we have the rate and the reciprocal rate. Uh, one thing is. Um, we're using the free account and free accounts, the default based currency that they use is usually the, the European one or the USD one. So if you want to change to another one, they will say, sorry, we can do that. We cannot do that. We have to have a paid membership, but we do some workarounds on it to do the conversion by dividing by the denominator of that value of that base, uh, base currency to get any base currency that you really need. So. Um, I think uh, maybe, maybe maybe this is like hmm. let, let's let's go with simple list now. The currency name is this very nice exploration purposes. If you don't remember the the, the symbol of it, the stuff. But simple list is good enough if you know you know. The, Let's see if that works. Um, yeah, it works. Okay. I think uh, we also mentioned how debug works. So now it's uh, pretty straightforward to you. So we're just removing the debug because now we know how it works, hopefully. Uh, so now we have those dates. You can see uh, uh, that this is on the, ba the base currency that's being used here. Um, I think it's European. Uh, we don't mention about it, but you can see from the data. You go to the data. It says Euro. And if you also go to the settings of the that we put the credentials before, you can also see what's the base currency that it is used on the web. But our program, no matter what, will convert it to European, no matter what. So if the base currency of uh, what open exchange rate is USD default. Yes, the URL that we'll use and we'll retrieve the data will be USD, but if you don't specify explicitly the base currency, it will be European, so it will do some transformations on it. But this one doesn't do any transformations right now because um, it's, it's, you know, it's European, the base currency on site, so no transformations. So let's create now use base currency. The parameter, the parameter that we used from Google before, and we put USD right now. So you will see the results being different. The Japanese yen against the euro is what 130 for USD. If what what do you expect it would be? I think um, the European has, is more powerful than the USD. So in that case, then you I think you can get 
more, I think with the USD, we'll be getting less. We'll not be getting 130, maybe we'll be getting 120. Okay, here comes the lottery, it comes and, oh, oh my God, 106. Yeah, 106 for one USD dollar. So here you can see the amount, this amount specifies the, um, the base currency that you're using, which is USD, so you get 106. Uh, it fluctuates from time to time, like, yeah. Now, uh, for me, it's like this is kind of used as uh, for, okay, let's say I want to get every month to see the fluctuation of it. Let's do that. Mm. That's a lot of data. But yeah, uh, I guess <laughs> USD, USD will always be one no matter what. So I'm just gonna remove USD from the background. Uh, you see it are out. Very nice helper here. So we remove the days interval because you can only put on the date list only one parameter. Okay, so we got stuff. Okay, went to. It's really okay, kind of steady, and just the, the, the months later it became to 109 and stuff. If you can see other stuff like the Mexican peso is a little bit went a little bit haywire around me, and yeah, the Singapore currency is like very stable as well. Yeah, but we can see from here that a little bit, yeah, the USD has a little bit more power uh, over those few months. Uh, now, uh, one unit you cannot describe much. So, a lot of the things is like one of the advanced features is um, like right now you can see that this one is converted by our own program. And it may not be 100% accurate, but it's 99.9% .9 accurate. So, if you want to use the paid membership, if you already paid for the Pixar account, you can use that. Uh, fortunately, my API key is a legacy account, and if you have the chance, you can read my documentation and check if you can still register a legacy account and get the paid membership features for free. So I got them for free. So if I put a paid membership, you will see the results will be a little bit different because I I don't do any conversions anymore. I go to the site with base with changing the base currency, which paid memberships are allowed to do. So let's go to the debug so I can show you. It's the, it, because if we scroll up, you see um, when we had to call the right here base euro. You see. I cannot change that if I'm a free account, but I can change that if I'm a paid membership. So I'm not going to do it with USD. Let's do that. Um, I think I also want to get a, a new date on it. I think it's called basic membership, not paid membership. Let me check the, the documentation here again. Um, Paid membership. Okay, it's paid membership. Um, oh yeah, the back I didn't write correctly. Okay. So, so right here, what happens here is because I'm using a different base currency, I put them in a different database. So if you want to save your API code, stick to only one base currency. My preference is the one that the free account provides, like the European one. Maybe that's the most accurate one because it's the most free one and the most people use. But regardless, if you see the results here, they are like identical. Okay, let's go 19.5886, 19.5885. So we just talk about one, what, 1,000, 1 million, yeah, of a small, slight digit change. So that's the conversion that we do. It's like 99.9%. .9%. So if you if you really want something very accurate, then you can go for that. But it's a service provider. The results will be different. So this is something very marginal. 
to me. So I think you will be happy with the free version already. Now, um, what you can do here is you can see we use USD here. If I use another service provider, which I'm going to show you right now, um, I think um, instead of using Fixer, we're using another service provider like Open Exchange Rates. But I know Open Exchange Rates is USD. I'm going to put Euro, and you will see that it will not work out. So it says, you know, it's forbidden and it's retrying 60 seconds. We have some retry configurations. Let me show you that. Yeah, it tries seven times with a delay of 60 seconds with a backlog of two. So the first time will be 60 seconds, the second time will be 120 seconds, and so on and so on. And so it's, yeah, we can always change those settings. So we use a backlog exponential. So I'm going to cancel this. If I use USD, it should work. I don't, even, I don't think I even need to type that because it's already on the settings. So I'm not going to type that. Uh, Interesting enough. Uh, one moment. I think uh, I, I just have to check for a while. So I, I'm thinking that, in my opinion, that we have the wrong API key, but I'm just trying to check now. Um, maybe base currency euro then in USD. It did work with that when I put base currency USD, but if I don't use it, it just errors out. Interesting enough. Interesting enough. Um, and basically, uh, let's be a small bug, and it's gonna be fixed on on the quid version. So. Basically, uh, we're going to check on the code again, and basically, it should it should work. Um, so we have the base currency used on site. So, oh, God, it totally works fine. So, what what am I saying? Why? Because if I say Euro, right, it will say, oh, I will try to use Euro, right? But it will not, it will error out because I don't have paid membership for open exchange rates for Euro. I only have it for, um, for so I only have, so I, so I need to get it on Euro first. So then you get, I need to get in USD first and then to convert it as a Euro. So I just have to remove the paid membership because I, you cannot, so 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 you cannot for, for this one I can I can only have one for open ex, for open exchange rates because I don't have paid membership I can only use USD if I try with Euro as a paid membership I cannot try so I have to use the free account without the flag paid membership so it stores them in USD and then converts them to Euro so this one will work if you so if you see it just picks them up for the USD and it works and then converts them to euro. These are European. Now, if I now if I can change it to euro. And then I have the euro, the, the European equivalent of it. Um, I mean, we are already on euro. So if I want to get the USD, which is the direct one, right? Yeah, it's like that. So yeah. Um, 
the whole the whole idea is that if you don't have paid membership, you don't put uh, or you don't uh, or, or which translates is you paying it or they give you the paid membership for features for free either through a legacy account like Fixer did, then yeah, you are all set. But if you didn't, then um, you cannot it, it will not work out for you. So if you go to the data here, so we have a lot of files here, and I will explain what happened here. Uh, if you can see, um, we have um, we have currency fixer for euro and USD, and as you can see, they are populated uh, very fine. Um, one of the interesting things is uh, uh, right now, yeah, it's, it just caught off my attention is that it, it, the database it, it just it just does not um, it's case insensitive of the, the, the base points and stuff. Um, so I, I will try to, to fix that to make it lower case so it doesn't create two databases. So if you use capital letters or small letters, it will just fit the data twice. So I think I will just make it lower case. Um, so it, uh, yeah. So you can just ignore that. It should be actually one. But if you can see the euro one, it's like almost empty. It's like what's that? That's even like that's not that's like two kilobytes. So it, it, in other words, it didn't do anything there because it, it doesn't have access to that. It only has, we only have to have paid members to have access on that. But if you see on the currency picture, we have access for the European and the USD. Um, so that's about that's about it. Um, now, what else we can talk about is um, you can use multiple currency service providers. Now we just use uh, open exchange rates and fixer. Um, you can use other ones. As you can see, it uses a different database and you know different paid membership. I think this is case insensitive, so I'm going to try something for fun, uh, maybe. MXN, and then we use um, currency layer, and I just want to check the database and how it does that. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, it says um, currency base was not found. Uh, maybe I Again, it has to be capital. It has to be capital. Okay. Uh, so it's actually it's actually case insensitive, right? Yeah, it's case insensitive. Yeah. So why would it create two different files? Of course, uh I can see now we have currency layer. It's also in USD. That's the thing, and I, it works fine as you can see the results. I'm kind of a little bit uh, flattered that the the way the flat file saves the files, but that's that can be a different story. But I'll have to look at it later. So basically. Um, Let's stick up with um, currency layer then for now. So if we can see the amount is just one. What if I want one, one, 10 or 15, right? So that's like a conversion feature. And you can have that by just putting amount. And then maybe I want uh, 54.34 Mexican pesos. How much would that be equivalent to the other currencies? So you just put that as an optional parameter right here, and uh, is it amount? What's that name? Mm, yep, it's amount. So it's uh, I, I just need a typo there. It should not be two m. It should be with one m. And there you go. Now we have the fifty-four point thirty-four. Uh, against the Singapore dollar, that's like 3.82 SGD dollars. And maybe a few months later, it became to 3.72. It has less purchasing power for the same amount of money. Now, um, 
Now, the other things that I want to finish and wrap up is, did we try all the options so far? Well, you can sort it by symbol. It's very nice as in, you know, maybe you just want to check uh, one of points. And this is also very nice maybe for the CSV fans. You want to set, sort it by currency first and then by date. We have that option, you can do that. So, what other stuff we didn't check? Currency name list, we checked symbol list, we checked date list, we checked amount, we checked base currency, we checked days interval, we checked debug visual, we checked date members, we checked no handler, we checked and shared by symbol is the one we're checking. And last but least, not least, we will check the output fluctuation, which is a very, very cool service for visualization. Okay. We sort them by symbol. Now you see they're all sorted by symbol. You can see all the top again and see the value of what it happened against mixing a peso. It got overvalued at some point and then it just dropped up even worse than before. Um, this is Mexican peso, so we don't really care about it. And here is also the same thing the Singapore dollar. Okay, and the, the, the last flag parameter is output fluctuation. Okay. Output fluctuation. First by symbol by symbol by default, so you don't need the other parameter. So let's do that. It makes sense. The one does it just checks the percentage difference. Yeah, you would be very cool. You want to see that. Okay. So I think this is very big, so I will just have to minimize this. And run it again. Now we have like more space in it. So if you can see, there's the percentage difference between the previous state and the today's state, and you see like increased 2.9%, then increased 0 0.5%, and then it dropped by 4.68% between those two dates differences. Mexican peso against Mexican pesos is zero. This and here with the Singapore dollar, you can see like 1.84%, and then it drops by 0.77% and minus 3.55%. You can also see how much money or you won or lost, like between those states you won $9, $1, and you lost $14. Here you just win seven cents, and then you lose three cents, and then you lose 13 cents. So everything is um, very cool based on, you know, if, the, if you had this coins in a different format at that time, you know, how much you're winning, how much you're losing, uh, and I think it's like very very cool. Um, so I think that's has like all of, has like almost all of the features have, the paid membership features have to get the, the time series of the different dates right here, sort them and then filter them by the name or a currency symbol. Get the the difference of the percentage of what happened between those two dates. Uh, convert them by using the amount parameter and, and so much, so much more. Uh, it works perfectly fine, as you can see through here. And I hope you, you enjoy it and you know under the hood how how all it works. It was a pleasure for me uh, showing uh, how Python points anywhere works. We tested and proved it down to the nook and crannies, and I hope you had uh, enjoy uh, watching this. Spread it around, share it with your friends and start it on GitHub and have fun with it. Thank you, thank you very much. Goodbye.